we are going to take a look at loading bathymetry data into QGIS. Um, so bathymetry data is basically underwater elevation, which is usually measured in depth below uh, the water level. Um, I'm looking at OpenStreetMap here, and typically on a map, unless they have bathymetry data, it's just a sea of blue, and it's hard to tell uh, what's going on in there. So I'm going to show you how to load in some base maps from NOAA that may have uh, some sounding depths as well as contour lines and other obstacles and uh, points of interest. And also if you want that as data itself, um, there's ways to bring that in as, as for example, contour lines or uh, sounding points. Uh, there's a lot of other features you can bring in as well, but I'll be focusing on those. Okay, so this is a website called historicalcharts.noaa.gov, and they have a collection of, as you guessed it, historical nautical charts. Um, so the idea with here is that you can zoom into a particular region, and I can click to select a point on the map. So I'll pick the island with Statue of Liberty. It thinks for a moment, and then I'm going to view those results. Um, you may get a lot of results because these may include national coverage maps as well as like the whole East Coast. Um, so if you want something uh, fairly local, you'll want to either sort by scale, actually I'm going to sort by year published so I can make sure that I have the most recent maps at the top. So I can see there are a few that were published in 2020 um, and here I might look at that scale so this is a slightly more detailed one. So I'm going to take a look at this New York Harbor Upper Bay and Narrowed, Narrows Anchorage chart. So I'm going to click on the preview. Here I could kind of zoom in and see here's Liberty Island. I can see that there are these sounding depths. Uh, one thing to watch out for is what units these are in. On these scanned maps, uh, these measurements are usually in feet. However, when we get the actual data, you'll find that the measurements are in meters. So it's really important to um, take a look at that and uh, try to assess what units are being used. So if I would like to download that image, I can click on the Add to Cart button. That adds it to my cart, and then if I go back up to the top, I can uh, look what's in my cart and download those items. Okay, once that downloads, I will want to unzip that file. And I find that what I have is this uh, JPEG. Um, but if I try to add that into QGIS, uh, it probably won't show up in the right place because it doesn't have any georeferencing. It has an unknown coordinate system. Um, I could certainly view it and take a look at these numbers, but it's not going to be georeferenced to the right location. So if we would like to add a georeferenced version of that map to QGIS, we're going to go to a website called uh, nauticalcharts.noaa.gov, and I'm going to go to data and look at GIS data and services. So here um, you can find seamless raster nautical chart services. So these are web services that you can connect QGIS to and basically it'll load imagery for the area you're viewing on your map. Um, so the seamless RNC, I'm going to use the WMS service, the web map service. So I'm just going to right click and say let's copy that address. And then over in QGIS I'm going to go to the data source manager and I'm going to create a new WMS connection. So I want to make sure I'm on WMS over here on the left. I'm going to say new and I will call this um, NOAA raster nautical chart. And I'm pasting that URL in there and clicking OK. And now I want to make sure it's selected up there and then I'm going to connect to it. Um, sometimes you'll see many different layers. In this case, I'm just going to take the very top level. And I click Add. And so now it's fetching from that web service imagery for this area we're looking at. So there we are. There's Liberty Island. Uh, we can see it overlays really nicely with the OpenStreetMap data. Um, I can see these numbers. Now again, this is a scanned map, so these are depths in feet. Um, as you zoom in and out, you may find weird things like this because they are combining several different maps, so this was part of um, the information on one of the, the scans, but if I just zoom out another level, um, here's a slightly more simplified version, uh, even more simplified, more simplified. And the nice thing about this layer is it actually covers the whole uh, country, so I could zoom way out and then like go into um, you know, part of the Great Lakes here, and I'll find that that service works there as well. So it's one service that is seamless across uh, the U.S. Okay, now if we actually want to get this, these soundings as data points with numbers attached, uh, what we'll want to do is go back into 
uh, a different website, which is ENC Direct. I think it was also linked from the, the other site I was just showing you. But encdirect.noaa.gov, um, what they have here is a map of where all the individual maps that they've created are located. So that's where you see all these rectangles. Uh, the different colors represent different scales or different types of maps. Um, and you can see that it basically covers the coastal areas as well as the Great Lakes and a few other exceptions. Um, but let's zoom into New York City here and find our Statue of Liberty. So at this point, there are several different maps that may overlap with this. Um, what I would recommend is open up the list of layers and here, um, these are groupings by sort of the resolution. So general is the most general, um, you know, very, very wide um, ranging map. Um, and as we zoom in, we might go to coastal or approach or harbor or berthing. Um, we're pretty far in, so I'm going to open up, turn on harbor, and maybe zoom in just a little bit more and wait for that data to load so we can see what it looks like. And I'm still waiting for it to show up. There we go. Um, and you can see there's many different layers in here. Um, there's things like seabeds or uh, dangers, cultural features, and so forth. Um, what I'm interested in is the sounding points. And typically, if you see a P, that's going to be a point. L is a line, and A is an area. Um, and turning these things on and off is just for previewing the data. If you would like to download it, you want to click this toolbox that says Data Extract. And again, you want to pick your kind of level. They've reversed the order, so just watch out for that. So I'm going to expand uh, Extract Harbor, and then I'm going to pick the layers that I want. Um, I'm going to zoom down to uh, Sounding Points, Harbor Sounding Points, and maybe I'll also get Contour Lines, which are up under Depths. Uh, it took me a while to figure out where these things were, so read through these lists carefully if you're looking for something. So I'm going to do Lines, Depth Contour Lines. And then scroll down way past all those options, and I need to pick an area of interest. So here I might zoom out just a bit, and I'm going to make a rectangle, say cover this area here, and then I can choose my data format. I'll do a, a shape file, and I'll say execute. Um, depending on the area you pick, uh, it may take a little bit longer to respond, and I've actually been able to extract pretty large areas, which is nice that it handles that. So I'm going to click on this zip file link, and go ahead and save that to my downloads folder. And the first thing I want to do is to extract that out. So it's called Extracted Data Harbor. I'm not sure why it says ArcMap, because we're going to use QGIS for this. Uh, and I'll say Extract here, and I have a zip folder. So inside here, I can see these two different shape files I selected. One is the points, and one is the contour lines. So let's try the points. I drop them in here. Um, in this case, they are not exactly lining up with this map. It may be that the map is for a slightly different scale than what I have, but I have done this before where the points show up right on where I see the numbers on the map. Um, let's turn on some labels so we can see what these depths look like. So in the layer styling, I'm going to switch to the labels, say single labels, and I need to choose which field is going to be used, and I believe it's the Z value will be the, the depth. And let's make that nice and big so we can see it. Um, and one thing you'll notice is that, so here we have 10 on the printed map, but it's 3 in the data set. So again, that's because um, the map is showing feet, and the data is in meters. So do be extra careful about that. Um, typically what you'll see is that with soundings on a map, um, they don't show a point, they just put the number where the point is. So I'm going to do a couple things. One is I'm going to move the point. So instead of cartographic, where it puts it off to the side of of the point location, I'm going to say offset from point, but leave that offset at zero. So here we can see that number three is right on that point. Um, and to make it more legible, I'm going to just remove the point symbols themselves. Um, and at this point, I'm going to remove the that base map. So here I just have the open street map layer uh, with the sounding uh, depths. And we can see that covers uh, pretty much the whole area I had selected. Um, so we have some, some deeper numbers here, which tend to correspond to, uh, maybe this is the main, main shipping channel through here. Um, let's bring in the contour lines from the zip folder just to take a look at those. Here's a shape file. Uh, let's give these black lines. And, and you can see that pretty much does correspond to uh, the, the point depth that we see as well. Um, these lines also have an attribute that should say the depth. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this stands for, but it's VALDCO. 
and that's like a 10 there. Here's an 8. Here's a 5. Here's a 4. And there you have it. Uh, so basically any place in on the coast of the U.S. or in the Great Lakes or a few other areas uh, like the Finger Lakes in central New York, um, you should be able to get these contour um, and soundings uh, as well as all the other data uh, that we saw listed on, on the website um, in terms of all these other layers. Um, you can get the images through the web service or you can get individual data sets as shapefiles uh, through, the, through this site as well. And so here are the three websites that I'd mentioned. The historical charts, um, nautical charts is where we got the uh, WMS service for the base maps, and ENC Direct is where we can actually get the downloadable data.